the spirit's not happy. We're back in Gettysburg, everybody, to investigate four brand new haunted locations, and one location with a dark and disturbing secret. In this series, we investigate the Gettysburg Murder House, the abandoned farmhouse, a schoolhouse, and a haunted object museum, which may be home to what some would call a demon. We're right now in the murder house. No way! Was it an accident? That light just came on. No. <laughs> Like straight up seeing a dude's face in the Estes. What the fuck was that? I'm actually like getting really chill. This is a place where people would have been killed. Can you tell us how you died? Is that you down there? Do you want to come talk to us? Liam! Liam! That's one of the most popular children that people talk to. Right when all this is getting intense. A bad spirit. No! No! Whatever was there didn't like us. Something happened here. Something wrong. It was really a mistake doing the Estes method, and then I get scratched. I don't know what the hell's going on with us right now. The first case of sleep paralysis that I've had in years. Uh. This is what I'm talking about, man. Look at that! During the fucking interview, too! It's still messing with us. But whatever we're talking to right now is really, really not good. Suffer. Suffer? What the f No. <laughs> what? What? Oh, holy shit, bro. Do you have a f***ing scratch? You have a massive f***ing scratch, bro. Amid the grass and monuments, these fields tell more than the stories printed on plaques and mile markers. For many, the sunlight washes away the pain felt by the memories of the dead. The people of Gettysburg say they still feel the spirits of lives lost during the three-day battle that would define American history. Gettysburg is the site of the largest, costliest, and deadliest battle of the Civil War. With more than 50,000 estimated casualties, the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863 marked the turning point of the Civil War. It is on these hallowed grounds that many people believe the souls of Union and Confederate soldiers still roam. So Gettysburg is known as America's most haunted city for a reason. This place not only has the average history of any average town in America with townspeople dying, committing crimes of their own, and living their own lives, but it was also permanently stained by the Battle of Gettysburg where tens of thousands of men lost their lives. Now we went over the history of Gettysburg in our last series about the place, but if you'll remember, in July of 1863, the battle took place. This was a horrific skirmish when the Union met up with the Confederate Army. Tens of thousands of men were killed, and oftentimes they were killed in pretty brutal ways. Many of these fights saw lots of hand-to-hand -hand combat. People were using bayonets and knives to stab people to death. Um, people were getting hit by cannonballs. They were being shot by muskets. This was not a very clean battle. A lot of people have said that the blood still remains in the battlefield. It's just soaked too far deep into the soil to, to ever be properly cleaned. And that's why a lot of people claim that this, this whole town is the most haunted town in America. Almost every building in Gettysburg was used as a Civil War hospital. It's funny, Connor and I have a joke. Every restaurant or place we've stayed at, we're asking each other, was this place a hospital? Because they have like 30, 40 different locations that were used as hospitals. Battlefield amputations were taking place in all these buildings too in very primitive and brutal, painful ways. So the energy of all those lives lost, the violence of the battle, and everything in between has all contributed to making Gettysburg such a paranormal hotspot. Hello, I'm Connor Shannon. I am uh, a camera guy for the Paranormal Files. We're going back to Gettysburg. Of course, this is the third part in the series. We're super excited. I mean, we've gotten so much great evidence and visited so many cool locations inside of Gettysburg uh, already. And so obviously me and uh, Colin are 
extremely excited to go back. But this time, something happened that changed me. So to start off our third time in Gettysburg, we wanted to actually take y'all onto the battlefield. And that's where we get to the Devil's Den. Now Devil's Den is known as the most haunted place on the entire battlefield area. You can't investigate the battlefield at night. It's actually illegal to be out there, so we had to go during the day. But this is a place where over 2,000 men lost their lives, and this is where a lot of that hand-to-hand -hand combat was taking place, in this maze of rocks known now as the Devil's Den. So let's cut now to our footage that we captured on that cold, chilly day when we sought out the Devil in his own den. So for the first time here on the series, we're going to be investigating a location where some fighting actually took place. Now, Saks Covered Bridge technically had some involvement with the battle, but it was never really a location of bloodshed. But right here where we're standing currently is a location that is known by paranormal enthusiasts to be the most haunted place on the entire Gettysburg battlefield, the Devil's Den. This place, back in the day, these rocks were literally stained, dripping with blood from how many people died in this immediate area. So, this place was horrific. It was covered in blood. There were so many people that lost their lives here. And the fighting switched back and forth between the Confederate Army and the Union Army. One side would control this area for a while, then another side would come in and take it over, and it went back and forth. But at the end of the day, over 800 Union soldiers and over 1,800 Confederate soldiers lost their lives here. You have to imagine, this area, this is the Devil's Den. This is where most of the fighting was taking place. So bayonets, knives, hand-to-hand -hand combat, Soldiers were running through these passages and these crevices and literally they would they wouldn't know who they were going to see when they turned the corner and so people were stabbing each other blood was spraying on the rocks at the end of the battle all of these bodies were left here for days on end they were rotting in the sun obviously there were so many bodies here that they couldn't you know figure out how to clean them up fast enough but there are rumors that bodies were thrown down these crevices, rolled down into these areas in the Devil's Den and just left for days. Um, obviously they've excavated this area and kind of removed all of that, but still this place is known to be extremely haunted because of that history. Not only was this battle important in the Battle of Gettysburg, but it was the bloodiest area. Hauntings from this spot go back to actually it's interesting, the very night of the battle, there are reports of Confederate soldiers saying that when they were manning this post after they had successfully taken it from the Union, that they were seeing figures, they were hearing noises, they were feeling this energy that was here already from all the death that had just stained the area. And it should be noted that before the Battle of Gettysburg, there was a, another battle amongst indigenous people that occurred here. And so people have seen the spirits of native chiefs and other sorts of indigenous individuals walking amongst these rocks. So this place is haunted. That's so why we came up here. We're gonna walk around. We're gonna investigate. We've got our stuff. There are thousands of stories of people seeing soldiers, middle of the day, hearing voices, all sorts of weird things happening here at the Devil's Den. Looking at all the signs that they have out here and reading up on some of the history, I mean, this is, this place is brutal. I mean, 2,000 deaths just in the one battle. But also if you go back into uh, just kind of the geology aspect of this area, all these boulders uh, were formed by lava <laughs> settling in this area millions of years ago, really. And as we know, there's a lot of energy stored in these rocks just from it coming from lava. This area is obviously going to have a lot of activity. I mean, even in the middle of the day, it feels weird. Oh yeah, well, doesn't it? Like looking down here, it's well, like I'm just picturing all the soldiers. I mean, imagine you're standing up on one of these rocks, shooting at your enemies, and then you get killed. And just to kind of get you out of the way, you kind of get kicked down into one of these little valleys, or this was where they're doing like temporary fixes on people, wrapping wounds up. I mean, this this ground has been tainted with blood. Yeah, this is a gruesome area yeah. everywhere throughout Devil's Den. Well, I say we uh, we set some stuff up. Oh, yeah. Well, do a little investigation. Let's do it, buddy. Okay. We were setting up. There's a temperature spike right there. Fortunately, there's a lot of tourists out today. Oh. Yeah, 
Yeah, there is a lot of tourists out today, so. <laughs> right when you say tourists, it's Any like. Any voices you might hear it might just be people out here, so. Yeah, like there are people coming up the rocks, sadly. Yeah, but we're gonna work with what we got. I mean, nobody's ever investigated this area yeah, properly. It's going crazy. So right now, what the f was that? Did you just hear yeah. that come through the huh. phone? Yeah, this is on the phone's home screen. I was like, huh. so right now, so right now, okay, I'm not gonna say that's paranormal, but that's really weird, whatever the hell that yeah. is. It literally was like, huh. <laughs> To anybody who may be here, whether you're a confederate or union, you still all died in terrible ways. So we want to talk to you. If you see these little boxes, these little toys we have set up, you can walk up and touch either of them and it'll show us that you're here with us. My name's Colin, by the way. My name's Connor. Oh, there's a big, oh, 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 huge K2 spike, but I couldn't focus because this damn camera. <laughs> Is there anybody here with us right now? Oh, there you go again. Oh, I can't. In focus. What the hell? <laughs> okay, no. There's no way that that actually just happened. What? Ancient time. Ancient time? Maybe like the. Indigenous. Yeah. Yo, that literally, dude, just toppled over. Well, that was weird that that thing just <laughs> flew yeah. off, you know? How'd you die? Where are you right now? Passage. Passage. Look at where we are, dude. Look at where we are. They died in the passage. This is, I mean, would you not consider this to be a passage? Can you tell me what your name is? That was creepy. I know, that was a creepy sounding noise. Amelia. Said, what's your name? Okay, to anybody who may be here, can you let us know where you? Anyone. You're... Anyone? Didn't I? Didn't I just say anyone? To anyone who may be here. <laughs> okay, could be any one of you. Can you walk up and touch one of those things like that? We want to figure out what happened to you. Did you get shot? Temperature spike. Just imagine, like, this is how you hear the, like, just voices coming off this mountain. Just imagine a rifle fire, cannon fire, bouncing off the walls of these. I mean, it was like getting complete shell shock just over the sounds and explosions going on around you. I'd go insane. Do you remember what it sounded like? What did you hear the sounds of? All right, we were just setting up some more equipment and the REM pod started going off like crazy. Is that you down there? Do you want to come talk to us? The wall. The wall. Jeez, it's going crazy. Both of them went off too. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Look at. Maybe it was somebody that killed somebody, and they feel there really bad about it. There were a few it. guilty people. The wall. Maybe they killed someone, stabbed them against one of these walls right here. Yeah. In the passageway, like I said earlier. Turning the ovulus on as well. Six clean low. What could that, could that be military? Like maybe he killed six people, clean cuts, hit them low. I'm trying to connect any sort of, if anybody online knows what bones, bones, older bones. Are there still bones in this area? Is that what you're saying? Bones that have never been discovered? You know how they said that it was in like the walls and stuff. We're gonna have to leave this area. We're gonna go find a quieter place to do a, another 
another session, but are you saying that you killed people here? Oh yeah, there's a lot of history. Keep running your film in that. <laughs> God damn it. There's a ton of people here. here. There's so many people, bro. Oh, oh. Why don't you ask? There's also zero assaults oh. Why would it? She died. She died. Oh. Oh my God. Oh. oh, 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 oh what the hell? That was weird. It switched. I've never back seen that, that, dude. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Oh. Oh. Okay, what is going on with this thing, dude? As you can tell, we're trying to. Uh, Investigate and we're trying to talk to you whoever's here with us, but there's just so many people. Yeah All right, we're gonna leave soon if you have anything to tell us you gotta let us know now Hannah What's up with all the female names? I think what we gathered is that There's energy here but like you said, 100%. it's interesting. There's no cell service. Yeah, but it's honestly, it might be a problem with like how lady. Uh, it might be a problem with how much energy's here. It's kind of hard to communicate because there's like so much trying to communicate with us. I mean, maybe the women's names could even be soldiers. Go further. Go further. Everything's going wild. But maybe you're a soldier. I think that whatever's here, it's too noisy. It's, there's too many people to actually try to do anything more substantial. I think maybe it was sounding like a soldier who killed somebody. They were guilty about it, and maybe they didn't want to. There's a lot of women's names that kept coming up. Maybe loved ones. Maybe loved ones, wives that these men want to be reunited with that, you know, they died here and they never got to see their, their wife, sister, mom again. Wouldn't make sense. Like a a soldier crawling through these passageways saying like Anna where are you Anna like lost is that true are you looking for your wife do you I'm miss guilty. guilty again guilty well thanks for talking to us we're gonna have to leave now I think that's it for this area sounds good to me all right so to finish up our investigation here at Devil's Den. You laugh at that. You look so goofy. <laughs> I bet I do. We'll flip it around. Oh my god. Yeah, turn it back. <laughs> We're back in this crevice. You can see we had to climb up here. We almost slipped and fell. Should have been filming it. But this is a, a, a place where assuming the people would have been killed, and then I would imagine bodies would have been thrown down here. Yeah. Get Especially from above. Way. Yeah, roll them off from the top. But I've got my Union outfit on. As you guys know from our first series we did here, we got outfits. And since this area is very quiet, we are going to do a DR-60 back here. Right here. To anybody who might be back here, my name's Colin. My name's Connor. And I'm a soldier for the Union. And I'm a cameraman for the Union. <laughs> He's my personal photographer. Exactly. Photographer. And if you got a problem with that, you better say something. Yeah, do you have a problem with that? I just want to know, what side were you on? Were you a confederate? Or were you fighting for the Union? Did you die here in Devil's Den? At the slaughter pen? Did you kill anybody? It's okay, you don't have to feel guilty about it. You can tell us, did you kill anybody? How many of you are there? Did you want to fight in the war? Let's listen to that.
Weird little noise at the end. Honestly. Well, we're gonna do one more session. Can you tell us your name? Are you angry that you got killed here? Are you a Confederate soldier? Or a Union soldier? What color was your uniform? Do you like that so many people come to the area you were killed at? Did you ever kill anyone? Well, shockingly, right then we got a moment of silence. It's like somebody was listening. Okay, well, you know, well, we got some interesting voices. We're, we got to get out of here because there's just so many people so we can even listen. But when we were recording that at the end, it was silent. So that was interesting. Yeah. It sounded almost like it could have been a union or a confederate that confirmed they killed people. They died here. There's a lot well, of energy in this area. We'll definitely have to go check that when it's a little bit more quiet, but... Thanks to anybody who came and talked to us, though. Yeah, of course. Hope you find peace if you're still here for some reason. Indeed. Okay, my friend. <laughs> On to the murder house. Devil's Den is a very, very cool location just because it was an area of the battlefield where over 2,000 soldiers lost their lives. But even prior to that, there was a lot of Native American and indigenous battles that were fought there. So very intense energy in that place going during the day is a little bit different of a vibe though just because there is a lot of tourists in that area but still nonetheless it was cool to be able to get evidence uh in such a historic part of the battlefield so the devil's den obviously was really interesting to be able to investigate but as you saw in that footage there are a lot of people out there at all times there's always tourists families there were kids climbing on rocks around us and you can't rent the place out obviously so you have to just make do with what you've got and that's why we film all these videos at night here in Gettysburg because that's when all the tourism calms down and these buildings are empty and they're able to breathe which brings us to the murder house now you may be thinking this may be a murder of a soldier from one of the two armies that fought during the battle but no a young woman named Deborah was brutally murdered in this home in the 1980s and this place is no joke. As you're about to see, some of the activity here is strong. It's at times violent. Doors have been seen slamming shut by themselves. Tons of voices, highly intelligent contact. So let's go now to that night, just three nights ago in Gettysburg, when we first set out to visit the murder house. Hello, my name is Brian Loudermilk. I'm with Gettysburg Paranormal Association. Uh, we're standing right out front of the Baltimore Street Murder House in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Um, inside this location uh, was a lady that was killed back in 1985. However, prior to that, uh, this building that we're uh, about to head into was originally built back in 1860. Um, it goes to three floors, uh, including a cellar. Um, and uh, from that point, from 1860 on, um, it was used as various uh, uh, different establishments. Battery warehouse at one point in time. Uh, down here in the bottom part is a uh, like an antique uh, shop where you can go in and visit. Um, these uh, older buildings like this, you know, they uh, go ahead and they uh, add to it. They go backwards 
um, into the back alleyways and um, turn them into apartments and storefronts. And we're about to head inside one of the apartments where she was killed at. Is that so, okay? Is this place spooky? I would think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love to Absolutely. Hear it. Absolutely. Okay. No, there's a lot going on inside here. We're not, I mean, we even have uh, some uh, pranksters uh, that come up through here as well. Some spirits that's not going to really identify themselves properly to you. Um, and uh, also, not only do we have the apartment that we're going into, but there's an apartment adjacent from it um, that has been divided off from the, uh, from the original hotel structure. And uh, that apartment also has a lot of uh, strange things occurring inside of it um, that sometimes bleeds over to where we're going to be investigating at tonight. So, but definitely this place is scary. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a split screen TV inside and uh, you guys are more than welcome to take a look at that. We have a, uh, have a recording 24 seven and uh, just due to the uh, amount of activity that goes on inside here, that activity or that information goes to our tech lab. And a flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> of course, during the interview. Of course, why not? <laughs> okay. It already begins. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, man. Well, go ahead and lead us in. All right, let's, let's head go. on inside. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, this will be the living room. Um, this is where we pretty much stage everything and start everything at. Um, we have their split screen uh, camera system sitting right here I was talking to you about a few minutes ago. Um, the original part of the building, it goes from that window to this window right here, three stories up, or excuse me, next story up, which would be three floors. And this wall right here wasn't here back then. This is a new addition to it, but it would have went over to the next apartment. If you guys want to continue to follow me right on around here in this little room. Now they got some really strange little closets in here that doesn't make too much sense, but I'm not an architect. So this right here, I would assume would be like a den or a study of some sort. Uh, people do seem to get some decent activity in here every so often, or if they want to go someplace quiet and uh, try to communicate with the spirits in there. Um, we can head right on upstairs. There is an energy that seems to move around this first landing and right here at the top of the steps. I have a, uh, a lot of people usually um, congregate around here. They get a lot of hits on their um, EMF recorders. Right here. Yes, steps. right here on these steps. <clears throat> now, I would assume this would be the bedroom uh, that Debbie and her fiance uh, were living in. Um, only because that if I lived in here, that next bedroom is right out there by the main road. Just because of all the lights and the noise and the cars going up and down. Me personally, I would pick this room. There's definitely a lot of energy moving between these two rooms. People do come in here and they'll just sit in a circle and they're turning all their equipment, make a little camping spot inside here and try to communicate with Debbie or with uh, any of the other spirits that are moving around here in this building. And there's a strange walk-in closet just right around the corner here to your right. Because <clears throat> as you can tell, there's no real closets in here. But this right here is a, as you can see, is an old closet that's, uh, looks like it's got a little water damage, but the building is old. This is what I'm talking about, it's probably a closet of some sort, or maybe another den. Now, I've also noticed a lot of times that people that decide to go ahead and do ghost hunts, they'll get themselves in, in the middle of a room, a very large room, and they'll try to communicate with the spirits well, the spirits, they can skirt themselves around you, and you'll never know that they're there. I get, try to get people to get into corridors, into uh, choke points, like on steps and on landings and hallways, and stand there and turn your equipment on all around you. That way, that spirit literally has to pass by you or go through you to get to the other side. So you're making that choke point. I uh, feel something up there. Oh, yeah. being in a large yeah. room. What about that, you? That, I mean, the top floor, I, mean, I don't know what it is, but every time I go up to like multi-floors, I feel mm -hmm. like it's kind of like less and less people access those top floors. Mm -hmm. But once you get up there, it always feels kind of like super charged for some reason. I don't know if it's like something with it being like 
higher up. I mean, you never so, know, man. Never know, honestly. I, I mean, that's why it feels it, just weirder up there. Oh yeah. I, I mean, say. everything we do is an experience, and it's an experiment to like figure out what things are going to be working the best. Also, from right here, I can see fingerprints inside the dust on top of this door the door frame <laughs> I see right that here. Too. That's pretty crazy. On on all of them. Like someone's been hanging from him. Dude, can't claim that one. <laughs> that wasn't I'm you? too old and big to be doing that stuff, buddy. <laughs> and, 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 so I had to grow and I won't get back every up. single one of them, too. Now, the funny thing is, you're talking about the different energy when you guys are going up high. Well, next door in the apartment beside us, um, we've heard things that lead us to believe that there could have been a fire at one point in time in the attic. Now, that we really? have absolutely no access to the attic on this apartment, um, but the access to the attic uh, next door to us, it's strange how they did it. They actually closed the steps off and turned it into a um, into a closet. Really? Yes. And there are spirits that have come across a couple of times to talk about fire, um, smoke, uh, that type of stuff. It keeps coming across to us that um, leads us to believe that there could have been something that happened up there in the attic area. And not to mention a lot of the uh, soldiers uh, that came through town here. Yeah. A lot of these old hotels and houses, they were used uh, as... Um, um, not, not, not as a casualty collection point, but um, for wounded soldiers yeah. um, to come into to, uh, to get aid, to get help or whatnot. Like medic. Right, right. It's like a, like a temporary medical station yeah. of some sort. They would come inside here, and in some cases they would hide them in the cellars or hide them in the, uh, in the attic area, yeah. and they don't always make it out of those locations. Oh, yeah. So it's, so what you're feeling there is pretty valid. Oh, 100%. so. <laughs> Off to a good start. What I say? <laughs> and here would be the dining room, and then we have the little kitchen right here. Um, uh, people seem to seem to get Debbie in here quite often. Um, now, when I give you the history of what had happened with her um, at this spot, um, uh, this is the spot where she was uh, where she was shot at. She had, apparently she had fell to the ground right here. Um, as she was falling to the ground, according to the records of the police reports, that uh, uh, the gentleman that shot her, her fiance, his name's Donald. Apparently after she was shot, she had, um, according to his testimony, is that he went ahead and he, he had grabbed her before she fell and hit the ground. Um, and she apparently had uh, crawled her way through the floorway here, through this doorway here in the dining room, and that's where she had, uh, uh, passed out at and that's where the paramedics and the police department had found her laying at was actually right where you're standing at now oh, Me? Yes oh. Right here laying across the floor bleeding out oh. um, um, There's really not too much other to go through. I mean we got this little area here that actually kind of walking back into the 60s back in here if you can notice this beautiful pea-colored green <laughs> inside here. I like this. So it's um, like a mud room? Yeah, yeah, just like that. Now, just so you know also, I mean, uh, people sometimes they'll get um, EMF hits uh, right here in front of the stove, but it's just this breaker box. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've had to stop people before they're having full off conversations right here. And I'm like, whoa, buddy, uh, there's a breaker box on the other side. <laughs> you know, they're, they're talking to the breaker box. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And uh, the refrigerator is unplugged. I mean, I have even, I've even had people talk to the refrigerator before because anytime <laughs> the compressor kicks on and off, it shoots out an EMF field oh, yeah. and it messes with people's meters. So I've had to un at least unplug that, but just let people know up front that that's what's going on with that. Um, and we have a, uh, a little back porch right here <clears> that goes here into this uh, back parking lot that oh, I was talking to you about earlier. Not bad. As you can see, we have the uh, police department where the cars are parked at right there. Ironic that the ironic how it is. Yeah, right. the police department's across the scene from exactly. the street from a murder and scene. And a courthouse right here next door to us. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's the uh, address, the 133 Baltimore Street. <clears throat> and how old is that church across the street? That church, this church right here, I would say it's probably more of the uh, probably mid 1900s. But there is a old black church right here on the corner. Um, that was here uh, way before the Civil War even come through here. It, it's it's kind of really cool looking. It looks like an old castle. So, but it's like the black concrete. It looks like an old castle type thing out there. But that was pre-war uh, pre era. So that's a neat place to check out too if you want to look at it. It's just right here on the corner of this 
actually right here in this kitchen area where she was shot at, um, I'd say probably about four-ish four years ago, I had a gentleman standing here. It's cold out like it is right now. And he was just standing right here fooling with his equipment. And he had a jacket on and he had two gloves in his pockets, like snow gloves. Yeah. And as he's standing there, you can see from that camera behind you guys, um, something had, had, had pulled his glove out of his pocket. It paused for probably about a second and then dropped. It was very noticeably pulled right out and then dropped. And he did one of these numbers. He's like, doing what the, you know, and he goes down and picks it up and books at it and puts it back in the pocket and just doesn't think anything about it. And then we went back through the cameras and through the feed and we noticed that there was a little bit of a pause there and his hands were up top here. So something had pulled his glove out trying to get his attention. Um, now people have done a lot of stuff in this room here, um, getting, um, speaking with Debbie. Um, she's a very colorful person, real playful, um, like, a, like, a, like a social butterfly. I've had people come in here and talk about the different meals that she likes to cook. Um, that, that usually stirs her up and gets her attention, and they just start talking about food, okay? Just something that's out of the norm yeah. of questionnaires. Um, it seems to get her attention a lot quicker um, in this room here. So doing that kind of stuff seems to really help out. Now in the room behind us here where she had crawled through this doorway at, and passed out of that, now this would have been the dining room area. I believe it was probably about from the center of this wall over towards you where you're standing out there. We also caught on the camera a, uh, a mist that started forming and moving around there. Then all of a sudden, the mist just disappeared. It just it just went away. Um, this we, wall right here, right across that wall. Yep, probably right in this area here. It just like went across the wall, and it was just like starting to form itself, and then it just vanished. Um, couldn't figure out what the deal is with that one. We ran around seeing if anybody was in here vaping. You know, that's the first thing they do is try to debunk. You know, because people hide vapes, you know. But there was only one person in here, and they were over there by the radiator, by this heater. Now, people have been able to um, also play music for Debbie. She loves music. Um, she, was, uh, she was born in 1953 and died in 85. 1981 is when MTV first came out, so she really loves music, okay? Um, if uh, She likes Fleetwood Mac, Barracuda from Heart, all those old, all those old groups, you know, she really, she's really into music. I've had people sit in here, you know, they'll make a little camp out area, turn their all equipment on inside here, and start playing music, and we've had it to where that one meter would go off, then it would stop, then another one would go off and it would stop. It's almost as if she's like running around, like you know, around like dancing around, around the room, room. Like Stevie and, Nicks. <laughs> and enjoying the music, oh, you yeah. know? I mean, music is timeless. I mean, you know, that's the, music is the great equalizer all the yeah. time. Everybody loves music in one form or another, and there's so you know? There's so much energy in music, too. Oh, there yeah. really is. And it brings up a lot of nostalgia and a lot of emotion. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so people do that in this room here, and it's pretty decent. Um, now, we got this place probably about... About two weeks into having this location, um, I was doing a hunt and um, I was able to bring my own equipment and do my own thing. And I'm standing over here in the corner of this room and I had my equipment on. One of our rules is no instigation. We do not instigate anything or antagonize, pardon me. We don't antagonize the spirits or make fun of them to get them to do anything for us. Uh, just, to, just to put me out of respect for obvious reasons. Um, well, I was standing over here and I started talking about how pretty she was. I started flirting with her. I started um, doing those little bar jokes that guys say to girls that either a girl's going to laugh at you or they're going to slap you, you know, one of those you know, stupid bar jokes, you know. Well, I was, I was just trying that out just to see what would happen. And as I'm in here doing that, somebody in the living room had a, had a radio sweep on, and every so often you could hear laughing. And I thought that was the coolest thing, okay? But, I mean, she's a pretty lady, you know. I mean, it's sad what happened to her, you know. And... Uh, well, I just went along those roads and just started pushing those buttons a little bit. But there's always that fine line between antagonizing and you don't want to go that route. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, down these steps here, when we first walk in at, um, at the bottom of the steps, right there actually where your suitcase is at, there's a door that leads down into the cellar. Now, unfortunately, we don't have access to the cellar. It's low ceiling, uh, dirt floor. It's, 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 a, it's a hazard to go down into. It's easy to get hurt. Um, however, I have instructed people before to go down to the bottom of these steps 
and bang on that um, basement door and just say, hey, soldiers, I know you're down there hiding. Come on out. Come on out here and talk to us. Stole, don't hide from us. Come on out here. One of those numbers, kind of like letting the spirits of the soldiers know is that, you that the jig is up. No, it is not. Did you I'm hear that? that too. Yeah. I did hear I it down two, there. I heard two knocks. Was that down there? It, it sounded like I that. couldn't tell. It sounded like it was either from this room or down there. It was there. like... Yeah. Yeah, like a little simple knock. Yeah. We haven't even started. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta <Yeah>. love it. <laughs> Yeah, anyways, so I anyways, but, but you just let, let the spirits in the basement know that the jig is up. Hey, we know you're down there because a lot of times they will hide from you. They don't want to be bothered, but sometimes that little trick works and they'll just come right on out and start fooling with your mirrors right there on the steps or start trying to communicate with you through any of your um, uh, radio sweeps or uh, knocking or anything or knocking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. That was just my fluke there. That was yeah. kind of cool. Um, but here in the living room area. Um, uh, I've had people sit down in these chairs, they're playing music for her, um, they'll put out the cat balls, look at the cat balls to go on and off. Like, a, that was a loud knock, that was louder than the first two. Do you want to ask for if they can make a sound, because I know you? Sure. The spirit that's making that knocking noise, can you please do that again for us? We heard you. Please do that one more time. You got our attention. You're doing good. Do that again, please. Oh, right there. That was a low thump. Yes. Yeah. It was a real low thumping oh, sound. Right there, yeah. So like the first one sounded like like kind of like a knuckle knock. Mm, yeah. the, that last one sounded like so someone hit go. with the back of their fist. There's is. something down there in the oh, song. Yeah. Like I'm telling still, you guys yeah, about yeah. to get their attention. Yeah. And it, it, you know, they think that you know that you know that they're down there. And yeah. oh man, you know, I'm the hiding's not working. I got to come out. You know, and it, it startles them instead of them startling yeah. you. Great start. That is a good start. <laughs> it's a very good start. Um, but, yeah, but this room right here, it. Oh my goodness. It just levels all different types of um, stuff going on here. I mean, we've had shadow figures moving between this doorway right here from like going down from the steps into that little room we just first walked into that I said was probably like a little den of some sort. Um, have shadows go across there. Um, just being up, being down here, looking upstairs at the cameras. Um, this right here, this camera, um, separates the, the bedroom that's at the main road and the bedroom in the back where the air conditioning unit is and the window. The one where I said would have been more, where she would have probably had her bed at. Um, we've had things block out uh, this doorway right here. Uh, people are experiencing things upstairs and, and hearing boot steps up and down the steps. Oh uh, my goodness gracious, there's so many things. Uh, it's just, uh, you guys are going to have fun tonight. If that's if that is what we think it is, and we startled something downstairs, then y'all are going to have a good night tonight. And like you said before, there were energies that aren't associated with the Correct. house? Correct, yes. And what's the story with that? Well, it's not, not too deep, but what happens is, is um, some of the spirits that are just moving around on the streets, because there were fighting right here in, 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 in town, in Gettysburg, there were spirits moving around out here. There are a lot of fighting going on with the spirits. If they figure out that there's somebody inside they can communicate with, they are been prone to know, they, they've been known to come inside here and uh, try to communicate with you because they know they can. Uh, a lot of jokesters, a lot of tricksters will come through here. Um, things that come across as being neither human or non-human. Um, I'm not gonna go deep into that one. That was like footsteps yeah, upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Very wow, clear. Dude. Are you moving around up there? I thought I heard some voices, but that might be out there on yeah, the curb yeah. or on the sidewalk. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So, um,. Yeah, you got a lot of trope, uh, tricksters that come through here every so often. Um, I mean, I had a team come through here one time, and um, it, was, it was a team of a uh, uh, psychic uh, paranormal group, um, and they are uh, claimed to be Wiccans. And uh, they came through here, and they did their thing, and I just stood back and just listened and watched. 
And then um, they came up to me, and I, obviously I want to know what's going on, what they had found, and they said that there was seven human spirits moving around this building. Um, I'm guessing the building meaning the hotel altogether, and there was one non-human spirit, and obviously my first thought was, was something demonic, you know? It was like, oh, we don't fool with that stuff, you know? We don't want to yeah. play that game, you know? And uh, it was like a red flag flew up, and they're like, well, no, it doesn't come across as being demonic or being human. It comes across as being something else. So what that something else is, we're not really sure, but every once in a while it does show itself. Um, and one other uh, little wild card too, the gentleman that owns this building, the landlord of the building, um, he uh, buys, uh, he goes to auctions and estate sales and he buys things and he has a shop right below us. And uh, some of the items that he has below us right now um, are a little on the shady side. Um, some really strange looking dolls, uh, teddy bears, all kinds of artifacts from like different furnitures and you know some really old items that he has downstairs for sale um, that he th feels as though that some things might be attached to that. So if he's bringing things in here from you know someone's house that has passed away, who knows what's attached to these items and it's getting thrown into the mix of everything else going on around here. So you got yourself about a handful of things happening all at one time here. <laughs> but, so I guess to end the interview, would you say this place is haunted? Yes. Yes, this place yes. is definitely haunted. You would, you would definitely tell yes. people online this is haunted. This is haunted. Uh, this place here, I've been with this company for 12 years, and through the nine, nine or so years that I've been hunting in this location, <clears throat> I mean, obviously there have been nights where nothing happens, but like what I had spoke with you about earlier, spirits don't always come on command. But when it does, it does. Like you guys are hearing already knocking sounds. Uh, there's something already trying to get our attention here tonight. So when it happens, it really happens. And what do you think is like the freakiest part of this unit? Like what to you feels the most off in here? I want to say the, the first part of that landing right there, uh, there's something happening around that landing area, tired at the top of the steps. Here in this living room, people seem to want to congregate in this living room area here, but they don't get as much as they hope for inside, inside this living room area here. But whenever they go into the dining room, or in that doorway right there where she had fell and, and, and passed out from the bullet wound and the blood loss, uh, people seem to get a lot of really good stuff there. Um, I mean, people want to focus into the bedrooms, but I think it's not so much in the room areas as opposed to being in a high traffic area. Um, I think you would get a lot more uh, in that. Oh, the energy, I mean, it's just the people, the soldiers that came through here, the people that lived here, uh, the high traffic area is just a lot of residual, a lot of, a lot of energy. That's what you were feeling when you were moving around up there as well. I mean, just from what we've encountered, just from walking through here, just from kind of like feelings that I'm getting of this house, I mean, it's, when I just heard those two footsteps, it sounded like it was coming right here from this landing. Yeah. And then... When I was standing in this uh, dining room over here in that corner, I could feel like a rush of energy. Yeah. Kind of like flowing uh -huh. into me when yeah, I was standing no, I in there. feel it in here. But I mean, I, I can tell yeah. that this place, I mean, we don't know what we're gonna find yet, but I mean, we're already feeling. I'm excited to find it. Oh, Whatever honestly. Find. <laughs> I mean, they're all obviously trying to get our attention already, and mm -hmm. it's just the beginning of the night, so. You wanna wish us good luck? <laughs> good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, now, back in 1985, this young lady right here, uh, Debbie Harmon, um, her and her fiance were living in this apartment together. Now, her fiance, his name was Donald, uh, Donald Painter. Now, Donald, he was one of those guys that likes to drink a lot of liquor and becomes violent. There was a lot of domestic abuse happening in this apartment against her. Um, now, one day after work, those two were uh, down the road at a local pub, uh, having some drinks. Um, right around uh, between 1 and 2 a.m., she apparently goes up to the bar and she starts talking to these two guys, um, waiting to order some more drinks for him for her. Well, Donald, he sees us from a distance and he instantly gets jealous. He approaches these two guys, he starts mouthing off with them. Now, <clears throat> there was a fight that started right there at the bar. Uh, they took the fight out to the back parking lot. Uh, the two guys beating to the ground. Um, there was talk of him actually pulling a pocket knife on these two guys. 
Um, that was never confirmed or denied by the court, um, but there was talk about that. After those two guys beat him up, um, he took off running, got up off the ground, took off running for this apartment, um, came inside here, went into his bedroom, got into his gun cabinet, and pulled out a Winchester 3030 lever action rifle, and he put two bullets in his pocket. Now, one for each of those guys. He's going to go down the road. He's going to shoot them both. Um, according to his testimony, uh, Debbie was trying to stop him from getting out that back door with that rifle, you know, trying to bring sense to him and trying to calm him down. Now we're talking about 2 a.m. in the morning, and there was probably a lot of drinking going on at that time, and he's done seeing red. He's probably not, uh, uh, he's probably not being, he's, he's probably not smart enough or, or sober enough to come to realize that he's making a mistake, and she was trying to bring that to his attention. However, as he was making out that back door, um, something happened. I guess they got into a little bit of a scuffle right there at the door, and she had pulled down on his arms. Now, when she pulled down on his arms, he tried claiming that, that the rifle fell out of his hands and hit the ground and shot her. Um, but what had happened was is, uh, um, it was proven false um, that he had his finger on the trigger, and when she tried to remove or move the gun out of his hands, it actually pulled the trigger while it was in his hands. So he keeps claiming this, this is what happened. Um, and it, it shot her in the, in, in the throat, um, severing her spinal cord, dropping her to the ground. Apparently he had, of course, this was another one of these things that he had claimed, is that um, he had helped her to the ground after the gun went off, um, you know, trying to make it look good for him, uh, that he, you know, didn't mean to do this, and it scared him, and it shocked him, and he was just helping her out. Um, but then something that contradicted that was is that apparently she had moved herself across the floor, had scooted across the floor into through the um, doorway into the dining room area and uh, passed out at that point. Now, um, the police and ambulance got here. That's where they found her laying at. Uh, they took her to Gettysburg Hospital. Gettysburg Hospital, um, back in 85, I guess they weren't um, equipped to deal with that type of an injury. Um, so they took her in the back of another ambulance and took her to uh, York Hospital, which is about a 45 minute drive from here, roughly. And in transit to the second hospital, she passes away. Now he does go to court for this. Um, he, he was in front of a jury, um, six men, six women. And uh, they all, um, they, apparently they, he tried um, saying that it was a complete accident, that he forgot there was a round already chambered in the rifle uh, from target practice beforehand, because he had the two bullets in his pocket, uh, one for each of those guys who was going to go down the road and shoot him. Um, so he forgot there was a round chambered in there. So what they did was, is they believed his uh, statements, um, even though there was a lot of, uh, lot of back and forth with what he was trying to say and to, trying to do, you know, trying to make, trying to paint himself into a good corner with this one. They got him on manslaughter charges instead of murder. Uh, they were going for murder charges, but he beat that. Um, he got five years in prison and $70,000 worth of fines. He is, uh, out of prison, obviously, now he's probably about 76 years old, living in North Carolina with a wife and kids and grandkids, while her little spirit still moves around in here. Now, we've been telling people this story because this is what's given to us. This is the, the hard facts that was given to us. Um, from my understanding is that her stepbrother had came into our shop one day and went to our boss and asked our boss, you know, you know what's going on with this? You know, what are you, what are you telling people about my little sister, Deb? And uh, my boss, you know, she produced all the paperwork that was given to us uh, that we have here, including her, uh, her gravestone here. That's her gravestone. That's up in, um, just right up the road here from us. And the brother was like, listen, multiple times that those two ever got into a fight with one another and he was drinking and started beating her or started yelling at her and screaming that she would leave and go to mom's house and stay the night there. Well, the family thinks that that's what happened. And she's like, you know what, fine, do whatever you want to do. I'm going to mom's, good night, see you later. And then her turning around and walking away and going out the door. Um, and then him just being mad and lifting up the rifle and shooting her in the back of the neck. Now, um, not saying anything about the police department around here, but a 30-30 round is a pretty big round, and as you can obviously tell, she's a petite woman, um, so it might not show whether it was a front shot uh, being an accidental shot or a back shot, meaning murder, as she's trying to walk away. Um, now, we've had psychics come through here, um, have people try and talk to her, and people come to, come to the conclusion that it was an accident. And uh, she apparently did not have uh, the will to fight and the will to uh, survive that gunshot wound. And so she just pretty much just gave up because she felt really bad about what was happening to her in her life. She was getting ready to marry this guy and she didn't want to, for obvious reasons. <laughs> and that's why they call this the murder house. Yes. 
That's why they call this the murder house. Do you have, what are the other things that you have there? Well, <clears throat> this right here, um, well the photograph that we have here is just superimposed, that's what it's on her gravestone. <clears throat> um, we have uh, a woman dies of a gunshot wound uh, from Gettysburg to Gettysburg Times, uh, 19, um, August 31st, 1985. More paperwork from the Gettysburg Times. Here is the gentleman uh, that shot it. It's not a really good photograph right here on this one. There's a smaller one that, that looks a little bit better here. There he is right there. He, uh, not a really good photograph of him, but he, he reminds me of what uh, Billy Mays looks like. You know, there's, there's infomercials, you know. <laughs> he does look like, looks like Billy Mays. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can I mean, see I, that. I've had guys come in here with plaid shirts on and black beards that kind of look like him. Nothing happens in here. It's almost like everything shuts down. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. I don't know if that has anything to do with the fact that it, it, it you know, it looks like him. I mean. So real quickly, can you step yeah, over here and just sure. show us where it happened and then we'll be done with the interview? Yes. Um, now all that energy I was telling you guys about in the hallways, I'm pretty sure that there was a lot of fighting between those two, screaming and yelling at one another, all the way down these steps through this hallway, as she's trying to stop him from getting out this back door. Getting out of this back door right here. Um, and this is, this is where it happened at, where um, he's had the rifle in his arms and he's trying to get out. And she jumps in front of him and probably pulls down on his arms. And as his arms goes down, that's when the rifle goes off. But he was claiming the rifle fell out of his hands and hit the ground and went off. Hmm. But they, um, the police department, the detectives, went ahead and did tests on that rifle to find out that if, the, if it hits the ground, will it automatically fire? And they, they did that test a few times with the rifle. And it was proven to be false, that he had to have had his finger on the trigger if she pulled it, then it would have been, you know, her shooting herself, you know, that type of thing. Or him just, with the family things, just trying to walk away from him and gets in here and he just shoots her. Trying to leave, going to mom's house. And this is where she crawled out. This is where she crawled out and stopped right here. I would say she's probably right here in the middle of the floor, in between there, here in this doorway. Wow. <clears throat> All right. All right, everybody, it's Colin here. We're right now in the murder house here in Gettysburg. This is a notorious location that we're so lucky to be able to investigate. I'm here with Connor, and we're also here again with our friend, Mike, from Charm City Paranormal. Mike, what's up, guys? How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. Yeah? I'm excited. Last time we were in Gettysburg, we had not only a successful video, thanks to everybody who watched, but Thank you. a very good investigation. Yeah, absolutely. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was great. Lots of activity throughout the entire video. It was good. It was a good one. And now we're here again. We're back. <laughs> so, to give y'all the layout of the place, we're right now in the area where the woman was murdered, basically right here. So we've got a music box set up, cat ball set up, we've got a proximity meter set up, we've got one static camera right here, one static camera right there, a REM pod, Mike's got an SLS, and we're just gonna get started. Connor? How are you feeling, buddy? Feeling great. This place is definitely a very charged location, just from, I mean, walking around doing the interview, we're hearing footsteps upstairs, downstairs. Uh, I mean, I can just feel like kind of the energy running through this place, so it's gonna be a good time tonight. Hope you guys are ready. <laughs> well, you ready? I'm ready. I'm gonna go red. Okay, everybody, so to whoever's joining us tonight here in this apartment, my name is Colin. I'm here with my friends. My name is Connor. I'm Mike. And we're just trying to contact anybody that may have any sort of connection to this place. Debbie, if you're here, we're not confrontational or bad people. We just would love to talk to you. So if you could make your presence known somehow, that would be awesome. We have a bunch of little toys set up. You just have to walk up and touch them. Step right here in front of them and uh, we'll be able to see that you're here. Okay, I don't know if I'm just hearing shit, but every time that you talk and pause, I hear like a woman's voice down the hallway. 
I heard, the first time I heard I'm here, and then I heard somebody say my name. But they said my full name, they said Michael. That's what I was like, when we were walking around earlier too, I feel like I kept hearing kind of just like a, not, not even just a voice, but it's almost like a, like, I don't know how to say it, but it's like a female presence. Yeah, it's almost like a, like a woman with kind of like a low voice. Yeah. That she was like, I'm here. Lovely. Debbie, if that's you, thank you for making contact with us. Like we said, we're here to hang out with you. If you want to talk, if you want to show us around your house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. that did not just happen. That's awesome. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> that's why. <wild. Okay. laughs> what? Oh, how, how, okay, how did that just happen? Debbie, if that was you, could you do that again just to confirm, please? Are you in the kitchen, Debbie? Are you in the dining room with us? If you're in the kitchen, can you make that red light in the kitchen go off? Oh my god, it's so <laughs> cool. Is your name Deborah? Is your name Debbie? Oh. <laughs> Debbie? Oh, oh! Did you see something blank in there? No. I, I thought, I swear to God, I saw something blank. Did you see it out of the corner of your eye? Yeah. You might have, yeah. That happens a lot, man. You'll see stuff out of your peripheral vision. Okay, so Debbie, though. Yeah. It's Debbie. Debbie, I have a camera right here that's facing into the kitchen. If you walk in front of me, and stand in this room with us, you'll appear on this camera here. That spike was huge. Yeah. Both of them. The one, the one was two, and then the other was just one. Which is what's weird. You know? It's almost like... So yeah, they both of at the exact same time. It was wild. And then the second one was just this one. And I, I really don't see the devices go off. They're like, what, five feet apart from each other? Yeah. yeah. They both No, instantly... earlier, earlier this, this wasn't even on camera. Connor and I were setting this stuff up, and we saw the REM pod go full max, and then it turned to, it was green at first, and then it turned to blue and yellow. No shit. Yeah, as yeah. we were talking like to it. Like a huge, huge spike, and then yeah. it's like stopped. Just like it did just now. <laughs> yeah, so it's like... You don't have to be afraid of us. None of this stuff in this room will hurt you in any way. These are means of communication for us, so that way we know that you're here. You come up and touch any one of them, or you can reach out and touch one of us to let us know that you're here. If there's anything that we can do to make you feel more comfortable, please let us know. I swear, I keep, I keep hearing like a woman talking this back there, man. This place is spooky, dude. It has a vibe to it. It really does. It's funny though, after that big spike, it seems like like the energy. Ooh. I was just saying, it seems like the energy. <laughs> Dude, the exact up. opposite <laughs> meter, bro. How? The okay, from over here to right when you're saying that to right there. A completely and different meter. Over this way, and that meter goes up. Did you go out in the hallway? Yeah, but he said the hallways are like the. They're the place. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I'm gonna set up some equipment out there as well. All right. Just see if we can. Yeah. Get the hell out of here, huh? Yeah. 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 Who needs this guy? Huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! Right after you left. Okay, he didn't see that bone. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a big spike too. Yeah, that's crazy. It went from both of these to this one to that one twice now. That's wild. 
<laughs> Here, let me let me pull this. I'm gonna reset the proxy in here. Cause this thing's like maxed out for some reason. Speed talkers on. All right. Taste. Taste in the kitchen. Oh! <laughs> no way! No way! Taste in the kitchen. Debbie, are you cooking something in the kitchen? Yo, didn't he say earlier? Food. 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 I've had people come in here and talk about the different meals that she likes to cook. Um, that, that usually stirs her up and gets her attention. And they just start talking about food, okay? Just something that's out of the norm yeah. of questionnaires. Um, it seems to get her attention a lot quicker. Yo, that's actually crazy, dude. We just got taste and, and an EM spike. Debbie, what you cooking in the kitchen right now? <laughs> Yo, that's actually crazy. Taste? Oh, you in the kitchen? Taste. No, we got, we got to cut back to the interview and say, Oh, yeah. He said she talks about Violate. Food. Is the kitchen where you were violated? I mean, it really was. Like, if we're going to be, you know, Completely honest wrong. about it. Is the kitchen where you were violated? Were you murdered in there? <laughs> okay, the f Bro. violate kitchen, and then she said no, not violate, because that's more like assault then, than murder. murdered. The moment I say murder, the, f the f one in the kitchen, bro, not even this one. This one didn't go off. The one in the kitchen went off. Heavy. Doorway. Okay. Doorway! Cap oh, going all down, cap all down there! In the doorway, bro! Oh, man. Oh, 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 oh! And the cap hole over there! And the cap hole over there! And the cap hole over there! <laughs> no way! Oh, no way did that just happen. Is there multiple spirits with us right now? The cap hole is coming off again. It stopped. This place is crazy active, oh, bro. Two red pods and a f***ing capital. Right after it says doorway. Right after it says doorway. And where are they located? In, In the, the doorway. Ha ha. Let's just laugh at us. Debbie, are you playing jokes with us? Can I ask? Oh. Sad. 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 I was going to say, how are you feeling right now? So that's kind of yeah. weird. Sad. I want to put this up here. Debbie, all we want to do is figure out what happened to you. Oh. Quiet. Quiet. Do you not want to talk about that, Debbie? No. no. It's a no. no. Wow. All right, Debbie. If you don't want to talk about it, if you just want to talk about but something he, else. He said earlier that she doesn't respond to murder questions. Yeah. Okay, so. And then she says, be quiet, ask her. No, no. And, <laughs> and, and it also said, quiet right as a REM pod yeah. really hit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, Debbie, um, what was your favorite food? Do you have a food that you liked? Deborah, are you here with us? You, you like to be called Debbie, is that you? Wow. Oh, 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 and the capital, and the capital, and the capital. And the capital. That's right. How is that possible? 
Yo, that's actually crazy because the cat ball is motion censored. Yeah. The, the cat ball is motion censored and the REM pod is EM censored. So those are two completely different things that are happening at the same time. So it said Mason and then it said Witch. I don't know if it's saying the name Mason or if it's talking about Freemasons. Because May, like Freemasons like yeah. this isn't or, like kind of considered... I wonder like, what the guy that killed her did for a living. Jasper. Jasper. Jessica. What's up with Jasper and Jessica? Jasper and Jessica. Maybe there are other spirits coming in from around the area that know that we're here right now trying to make contact. I mean, this building is very old now. Is that now? Have you always been no. here? No, we said multiple spirits. No. But why would we, why would we get multiple names? Oh. If it's talking about family? Up? Up? Oh, you want us to go Oh, you want to go upstairs? Should we go upstairs, boys? Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Fearful. Right. Fearful. All right. Is there something? Impressive. Oh, that just, oh, oh, oh. Can you set off that REM pod again if we should be afraid of what's upstairs? <laughs> no way, bro. And the capital. No, yeah. and the capital. No way! How the fuck is that possible? This place is wild. No, there's no. Oh, there goes again. There goes again. Team. team. Talk about us. Should we be fearful as a team. Yeah. <laughs> Should we all be collectively afraid. Yo, how is that possible, though, dude? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, every time the cap ball and that's like every time one, one cap ball goes off, the other one's going off. Yeah. Off. It's still going off. There's no way. We're not doing that. Dude, just jump, jump up and down once. But like, like us regularly walking around is inside Bro, the bro. They're telling us, go up. Which direction is the staircase? They're trying to tell us to go that way. Yeah. Do you want us to come up? Oh! Oh, oh man, I was about to and jump. this one too. This one too. Both of them, bro. It's insane. I'm telling you, we should go do a DR6 up there. This is the most I've ever seen these go off. Yeah, me either. The cat right, don't ever go off. No, it's in, especially at the same time as a REM pod, dude. And we've been walking around, moving around, we're not doing this. No, jump, jump once, just let me show. Do it again. Harder. That's do it again us. on this one. That's not us. Yeah, that's not us. I thought maybe it was one of us doing it. No, like, no, moving no. The floor. There's bad here. Is is there bad here? Oh, and the capital. And now no way, bro. No way. There's no way that that's happening. There's no way. That's <laughs> amazing. I'm just saying. There's there's no. You have to have actual movement with EM. Yeah. On I've two. Moved. I've never seen this shit happen ever, bro. No. Ever. From one side to the complete other side. They like our we are watching you. We oh. are watching you. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> Me either. I don't like that either. You having yeah. fun hanging out with us? Camp. Hmm. Maybe it's talking about like a civil war camp. It was nearby at one point. We are in Gettysburg. <laughs> well, that's that's that. Yes. <laughs> right when you said that. Okay. Yo, I feel like we got like a soldier in here and we got. Yeah. Day. 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 Hmm. Well, you want to go upstairs? Let's do it. I think this is calling we us could, upstairs. Uh, we could leave this stuff down here and I take my stuff up. I have Let's do the up. SLS up there. Yeah. yeah. I've been having DR60 been... SLS. Yeah. It's been running down here the whole time. There was so much energy inside of that murder house. Um, we don't know if it might have been from more of like a Civil War time or if it was Deborah that we were talking to, uh, but I mean, the, the REM pods going crazy and all, I mean, all the different uh, devices that were going off inside of the location 
we weren't really expecting that much evidence from uh, a place that's not as notorious as some of the other areas in Gettysburg, but nonetheless, we got some amazing evidence in that location. But we wanted to take it even further, so we headed upstairs. So like Connor said, the energy in that building was absolutely just insane. It was off the charts. Every meter was spiking. Everything was going wild. Cat balls. You know, that's something that I thought was interesting about all of this is that we were not only recording REM spikes, EMF spikes, we were also recording cat ball movement. So if you've never played with one of those cat balls before, you have to actually move it around um, for it to trigger. It's not an EMF device. And that's why it was really strange that when we were seeing the REM pods going off, the cat balls right next to the REM pods were spiking. It was almost as if something had physically touched the REM pod, made it vibrate, and then set the cat ball off. It was really strange. And to have two cat balls going off, totally different sides of the building, it's just weird. But seeing as we wanted to take this investigation even further, we headed to the upstairs of the murder house to attempt to talk to Deborah, or Debbie. And that's where things got a little freaky. Okay, so we're upstairs right now. Debbie, anyone up here? Did you say yeah downstairs? Yeah, I heard something. Something said yeah. Yeah, kind of did. Can you let us know that you're here by lighting up this flashlight? All you have to do is grab this light right here. I can speak through this. Oh, oh, the light! No way! Immediately! Did bro. you hear what the spirit talker said? What did it say? I can, can speak, speak through this. this. <laughs> okay, can you turn the light off again, Debbie? Wow! Wow! Okay, Debbie. Was it an accident? Just to confirm, can you turn it off if it was an accident? If you didn't mean to? I know you don't want to talk about it, we just we want clarification, that's all. Okay, so maybe it was an accident, huh? I guess. I guess that's her way of saying it was. Debbie, can you please, if this is you, turn that flashlight off? It's acting as hell in here, man. Did you see Debbie downstairs? Oh! oh. I'm gonna go grab your phone because I swear it said it's, heavy. It's talking on us. And the cat ball. Yep, there is the cat ball. You heard us. You heard, you heard us. us. There's us. A lot of names. Alright, let's do a DR60. You ready? Oh, yeah. sorry to lie here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Debbie, can you turn that back off? What? Oh. That was instant. Yo, REM pod and the thing. Okay, Debbie, we're gonna ask you some questions real quick. Oh, right when you say your name, dude. That's awesome. Debbie? <laughs> Are you standing next to Connor? Debbie, is this you standing here next to me? That's gotta be our guy downstairs. There's five of us. Debbie, was it an accident? Skeleton. If you 
tell us anything right now, any message at all, what would you say? I'm still around. <laughs> okay, Debbie, let me ask you, what was your favorite song? Debbie, what's your favorite room in this house? Debbie, can you turn that flashlight off if you were murdered? I was treated bad. So Debbie, can you tell me yes or no? Were you abused? Debbie, are you in this room with us right now? not Debbie. Can you turn that flashlight off and tell us who's here with us? You're standing next to Connor and said, like, oh! And the Yo. one behind you, too. Using my voice. Using my voice. And this camera's about to die, bro. Film this on this one. This is a full ass battery. I've been filming for like an hour. Dude, how do you know? I've been filming for less than Yeah, fully dead. Does it bother you when people are here? Oh! Yo, that wasn't you guys. I was filming that. I was filming that right there. Do you like having company here? Do you like when people come and visit you? Yeah. Mine. This is about a 
die, so I'm going to shut this off and I'm going to sit here. All right, y'all, so we have to wrap up here. We don't have that much time in the house. We have two locations to do tonight. It's already 1130. We're supposed to be coming until 1230. Private. So it is private. So we're going to get going. Deborah, Debbie, thank you so much for talking to us. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else that's here with us tonight, so thank you so much. You see that? Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what that was. That's been spiking this whole time. It's a K2. Oh, well, there you go. Place is wild, man. Could you no. imagine spending like a whole night in here? No. I would love to. Well, unfortunately, mm -hmm. we have two more places to get to tonight. Yeah. So, all right, guys. It's dangerous. What's dangerous? The next place is dangerous. <laughs> We're gonna go to the next place now. Hey, everybody! Thank you for watching this latest episode of The Paranormal Files. As you know, we like to give away a gift bag every single week to one lucky viewer of the video. This week, to enter the contest, it's super simple. All you have to do is like today's video and comment Ghosts of Gettysburg in the comment section below. I wanna see you guys comment. You can also comment a ghost story of your own. You can comment, hey Colin, hey Connor, anything you want. But each comment that you leave gets you an entry into our contest, so, we're so excited to give away a gift bag tonight. I'm gonna give y'all 10 seconds to like the video and go comment now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thank you all. Thank you all for liking and commenting. YouTube's been really weird lately. There was just a glitch yesterday that affected everyone from Twin Paranormal to a bunch of other friends of mine and myself where we experienced a massive loss of views and a complete cutoff of YouTube promoting our videos so I don't know what's going on but every time you like and comment and subscribe obviously you help the channel out but I won't take up too much of your time let's get back to the video so then we headed to the farmhouse uh, we were on a little bit of a time crunch just because the evidence we were getting at uh, the murder house and we'd only have uh, these locations rented out for a certain amount of time because obviously our tour guides need to go home at some point uh, but we still wanted to go check the place out. Uh, welcome to the Battlefield Farmhouse in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, this location was used as a field hospital at the end of the Battle of Culp's Hill. Um, now, Culp's Hill is roughly about just shy of a quarter mile in this direction to my left, your right. Um, at the end of the Battle of Culp's Hill, what happened was is, uh, the Union soldiers, um, at the end of the battle, uh, they had won that battle where the Southern soldiers were trying to take the Union soldiers off that hill. Um, now this is actually one of the only battles in Gettysburg that took place in the middle of the night, um, which uh, if you think about this for a moment, uh, the soldiers back in that time, um, with their technology fighting in the dark, utter madness broke out on that hill. You had, uh, you had soldiers uh, moving when they should have been standing still, and when standing still they should have been moving. Have a lot of fratricide happening on that hill. On that hill. Soldiers killing one another accidentally because they could barely see what's in front of them. Because if you think about this, between the darkness of the night, you got the smoke mixed in with the blackness of the night uh, from all the gunfire and cannon fire. Then you got the muzzle flashes, strobe lighting in these guys' eyes as they're trying to take aim at the enemy and fire. It was a horrid battle that took place on that hill. However, the next morning when the sun came up and the smoke cleared, the Union soldiers held that hill. They won that battle. Um, but they lost a lot of soldiers in the process and a lot of injuries. Uh, the Union soldiers, um, they marched up towards Baltimore Pike, this road out here in front of us, and took over a row of farmhouses and turned them into field hospitals. Now, these soldiers would have been lined up outside this house waiting to go inside to see the surgeon. Before they were able to see the surgeon, they had to go through a triage meaning there was somebody from the medical profession was outside here assessing your injuries before you made it inside. So what would have happened is, is a soldier would have walked up uh, to the door, a nurse would have looked at them and said, yes, you can make it through the operation, come on inside, or no, I'm sorry, I need you to go to the barn, report to Pastor so-and-so, as he reads you your last race and gives you fresh water as you bleed out. So there's a lot of picking and choosing right there at that front door, who, pretty much who lives and who dies. Now, if you made it inside this house, you'd have been laid across the kitchen table, He'd had four, bin, four big men pinning you down to the table as the surgeon's cutting through flesh and bone and muscle and tendon as quickly as possible, removing that armor leg, cauterizing that wound, then dressing that wound up, then dragging you out to the barn and maybe you wake up from that point. Now, after they removed your body part, they would have thrown it out the window on the opposite side of the house. Now, there's even reports of body parts being stacked up outside the windows that met to the bottom of the windowsill. 
that gives you a visualization out there. Now, there would have been attendants outside here in these fields taking care of the body parts and the dead bodies and the burial pits. Uh, you know, soldiers that had the stomach enough, you know, to walk up to your leg, grab you by your big toe, drag that stump across the field and throw it into a pit full of a bunch of bodies. Believe me, it was a complete and utter horror scene that was moving around outside there. I mean, between uh, the sights, the sounds, the smell, and you got the July heat pushing down on things, making things worse. Um, you know, you had packs of dogs running wild, grabbing things they shouldn't grab, um, and taking off with it if you get my, get my point with that one there. Uh, just a lot of nasty things happened out here. Um, <clears throat> Now, inside the house, uh, we do have a few um, uh, staple entities that are moving around inside here. Upstairs in the attic, uh, there's a young lady. Uh, she's a young teenager, um, in her early teens. She goes by the name of Elizabeth. Um, she moves around upstairs in the attic. Now, she usually hides out in the little cubby holes inside the attic. Um, it's a finished attic. Um, it's safe to go up there and walk around and try to communicate with her. She doesn't know anything about the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, from what we learned, what we learned is she died about 30 or roughly about 30 or 40 years after the fact. But the uh, other guests have left toys up there for her, dolls and whatnot to play with, and for trigger objects. Um, on the second floor, we have two ladies moving around. Um, one of them talks about the medical profession, possibly a doctor or a nurse. The second one uh, is a really proud farming or homesteading uh, wife. Um, so if she comes out she likes to brag about the the kids the crops the cattle that type of thing she's a real proud strong woman that likes to um boast about the way her life was living here on the farm um, on the main floor we have uh, the souls that are moving around on there that lost their lives during the battle or lost their lives um, on the operating table. Uh, they're very timid of new faces and of new people. They, uh, they usually hide. Um, my suggestion is, is it seems to get more information from the spirits if, you're, um, if you raise your vibrations, meaning like if you're very uh, happy, um, silly, you know, respectfully, of course, um, just pushing out positive energy, joking around, singing songs, being goofy, um, that type of thing. Thing, that usually gets their attention and they'll want to come out quicker to try to communicate with you. Um, at least that seems to work um, for the guests that I bring out here and for myself in that room. Uh, but they are scared for obvious reasons. Um, and uh, also one other thing, we do have one Confederate soldier moving around this property. Um, he goes by the name of George. Now, George, um, he's not a uh, he's not a Southern gentleman. I can tell you that right now. Um, if there's any ladies around, he <clears> seems <throat> to get a little on the handsy side with the females. Um, so it's all guys here tonight. So I guess we're going to be okay on that. End. I do have long hair, though. You do have long hair. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I don't know. He might he might fool him for a minute, and he'll get mad at you. It's worth a shot. <laughs> you can fool, we'll see. <laughs> make sure he's make sure he's videoing that. Come one. on, George. <laughs> Um, also, just so you also know, this uh, this property, I mean, you can obviously tell the house has definitely been renovated quite a bit. Um, the foundation is period. Um, the, uh, the house has been, you, you, as you're walking around, you're going to see all kinds of additions to it. Um, the, the most recent part of the house we found that was renovated was uh, in uh, 1935, and that's the, the front part of the building. It's probably right around when we reno they renovated this place. Um, <clears throat> if you go around here, look around here to your right, you'll see a... Um, a fence line right out here if you see the fence line or not with the camera uh, but there's a fence line right out here that divides the private property that we're on in national park land right on the other side and then beyond that you'll see a big tree line and beyond that tree line out there is going to be where um, Culp's Hill is at. Now we have um, Culp's Hill this direction um, directly behind you is Spangler Springs uh, over to my right, your left, uh, you got yourself um, big round top, little round top, devil's den out that direction. Um, and in this direction, we got Cemetery Hill. All hot spots, all battle locations. Um, and obviously right in the center of the town of Gettysburg, there's a lot of fighting going on. And then certain streets out there that was called no man's land, uh, where soldiers were fighting right across the road from one another. So it's definitely a hotbed of activity out here. Now, these soldiers, um, 
If you're outside here, I've gotten some really good evidence and really good hits with soldiers out here um, by doing some play acting. Um, meaning if you're going outside here, you're going to want to wake them up a little bit because 159 years, they're not really paying too much attention to you or anybody else. They kind of got blinders on just moving around. You have to wake them up a little bit. Um, I go out here because I'm prior service. What I'll do is I'll go out there and I'll bark orders to try to get the knee-jerk reaction from the lower-ranking soldiers that might want to come up and communicate with me somehow. Um, I would go in it as a, um, as a field medic, okay? If anybody needs any help, any food, any water, any medical attention, come please, come please Please come over here and communicate with me. I can, might be able to help you out. That type of thing. You want to wake them up, make them come to you. It's it's a little difficult to get them outside sometimes, unless you're one of those special people that you know the spirits are just naturally attracted to, which I'm not. So I have to work for it. <laughs> so unless you guys can do that, here's a little trick for you. All right, well, we'll definitely start right here in the kitchen area. All right, we got the kitchen. This here is the dining area, the living room area. Oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is where they did the operations at, is what we're walking through right now. Right here? Yes, sir, right here. This is where they did the operations at in this room. What kind of operations? Uh, I would say mostly amputations, um, detailed operations. Um, they really didn't do those. Uh, it's. If you had a uh, if you had a gut shot or a kidney shot or a lung shot, you're out there at the barn getting your uh, your rights read to you by a preacher. Um, most of the times, what happen in here is they'll just you'll lose a limb or a hand or a foot, depending upon what the injury you sustained. Uh, they'll try to patch you up and walk you out to the barn, and maybe you wake up from that area. But it doesn't always happen that way because there's a lot of disease yeah, happening. Yeah, a lot of death. Time. A lot of death. A lot of death and a lot of disease, a lot of things that people didn't realize what was going on around here. Um, this is the sunroom for you. I've had decent activity. Seems to happen right around this area here, which is good because you got a little shelf to put your equipment on. <laughs> Upstairs here. Now, I'll show you the bedroom where George kind of hangs out at. I call him here in this room more times than the other room. This little bedroom here. This little bedroom here is kind of a fun room because if you notice the ceiling slants down to that corner and the windows from that window and the window behind you there, you can see where they everything's kind of off kilter. And it's got an old barn door right here. Or excuse me, an old door right here, right here in the closet that goes to the next bedroom. But George kind of hangs out in this room here. <clears throat> got another room right here to your left. Got the nurse. Pretty much moves around in this room. Now I'm telling you guys where we have the spirits are dominantly located at. But they move, they move anywhere they want to go. You might get the kid downstairs, the nurse upstairs. Yeah. You know, it's they're not stuck in one location, obviously. Mm -hmm. And here is the attic. Now watch your head at the top of the steps. The uh, there's a 45 degree angle right here at the top. Oh, gonna bust their head on this thing. And this is the attic where Elizabeth kind of hangs out at. You can see the toys the other people have left her laying here on the floor. And she hides out in these little cubby holes. She moves around a lot inside of here. We've even gotten uh, what sound like soldiers up in here a few times as well. Um, not sure what that's really about yet. That kind of comes and goes. Um, possible sharpshooters yeah. up, up in here looking out into the field, ready to fight. So now I do know also that the mass burial pits, they only put the enlisted soldiers in these pits. The officers that got injured during the battle, they did not put the officers with the enlisted soldiers in those burial pits. They allowed the officers to recover from their injuries with inside the house that they got operated on, like in the bedrooms or in the attic area. Um, if, a, if, a, um, if an officer was to pass away, um, they would put the officers in the cellar of the basement, like in the basement there. Um, that would have been the coldest spot you know, during July, you know, to slow down the decomposition of the bodies. So that's where the officers would have been stacked up at, is in the basements. Um, so if you get any officers moving around in here, I'm sorry, that's probably what happened to them. They passed away in the they passed away on the battlefield, and they just laid their body to rest in the basement. 
Now, all the bodies have been exhumed that are out there, the burial pits. We have two burial pits outside. They have been exhumed and taken back to the states for proper burial, so we're not desecrating any holy ground we're walking around out there on top of there. But they were buried right out there. Yes, yes. It was only a temporary burial. Um, they might have been out there maybe a month, two months before the uh, undertakers came by and dug them back up, cleaned them off, and shipped them back to the state where they belong. So how about the lens, though? The limbs, the limbs got buried or burned. I would mostly say they probably got buried with them. Yeah. Um, the officers, from what I was told, now I'm not a historian by any means, yeah. I'm just going off of what I was told, is that the officers, um, in some cases, they were allowed to take their limbs with them. If they lost an arm, they actually wrapped the arm up and they could take it with them. Like so, <laughs> it's kind of gross if you ask me, but I don't know why you would want that, but hey. I'd take it home. <laughs> so what do you think is like the most active part of the house? <clears throat> this place yields a good activity. The room where I said George kind of hangs out at, that's a good one. And the, uh, the living room area is kind of 50-50 and the kitchen is kind of 50-50. Um, the other two bedrooms that I showed you at, they seem to be 30-70. Uh, 30% active, but 70%. you would say this place is haunted. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, people walk away here with all kinds of evidence um, and experiences, whether it's EVPs, whether it's uh, uh, stuff on the digital voice recorders, um, whether it's getting scratched, um, oh my goodness, um, getting sick to their stomach by spirits messing with them. So scratching, mm -hmm. what entity would that be? What entity? Um, I had a young boy. Um, now, I wasn't here with him when it happened, but he was inside that cubby hole, and he had a meter in his hand, and he was trying to find um, Elizabeth hiding in, a, in that cubby hole. And I don't know what he was saying or what he was doing, but he was probably about 12, 13-year-old boy. Well, he come down downstairs, and he's like, I got a scratch on me. My back hurts. Well, I had a, uh, there was a police officer with me from upstate New York, a retired police officer. And um, his, I was like, well, wait for your mom to show up and get, get your mom and we'll take a look and see what's going on. Well, the mom pulls up the shirt and here he's got the three scratch marks right down his spine. And it goes up between the shoulder blades and just down below the shoulder, like top of the shoulder blades and below the shoulder blades, three scratch marks. And... Um, I'm thinking to myself, well, how could he have done that himself? Because, you know, you always go to um, skepticism first. You know, you always go to, yeah. you know, you're trying to debunk it, you know, to make sure that he's just not doing it just to grab attention. And um, I had him lift his arm up, and his mom's holding his arm, and there's no way he could have reached that with his own arm to make those scratch marks. And there's nothing in there to do that. There's no nails or anything that he could have pushed himself up against. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it's, it's hard to say what he was doing in there. Would you spend the night in here alone? Yes. You would? I would. I would. Yeah. yeah because I've been here so many times, I think they know me. And um, being a fetcher myself, I think they would leave me alone for the most part. George is not a very nice individual. Um, now, spirits have been known to mask themselves as other things in the past. Um, so there's always those theories out there that you could be dealing with something that is non-human, uh, that's pretending to be human, to guide you the wrong direction. Now, George, he's not a very nice individual, and we call him George because I just heard that name a couple of times, so I'm just assuming that's what his name is. Um, and um, he always likes to, uh, or it always likes to uh, mess with women, uh, mess with young ladies. As far as an evil entity moving around here, if there is one, it would not be something that would be originally from here. It would be something that somebody would have imported for like, like another guest or something like that may have brought here. I would think that would only be the cause. Because the scratches don't match up with like a soldier. Exactly, or a soldier like that. like that. So why is there a young child in here? You know, why exactly. is there a Exactly, that's here? what I'm thinking, Elizabeth, who's that? Exactly, I mean, is that really a young child? You know, is that something else? That knows um, nothing about the, yeah. the battle that either. Is, I, I guess mean, that's a mystery we have to try to find. It could be, yes, yeah. exactly. I mean, we're going, uh, we're, we're going with the child. I mean, there's nothing um, 
other than that one time, I would say that was that was just like the beginning of last year that it happened to him. I'd say about the beginning beginning of our season last year that happened to him. Um, but since then, we haven't had anything like that happen. Um, I'm still slightly on the skeptic side with all of that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I wasn't here to see it whenever it happened. He right. just came down outside right. crying about it. But as far as we have here, we don't have anything here that's going to give anybody like a negative. Um, experience for the most part um knock on wood <laughs> we haven't had that no yeah exactly <laughs> no. Uh, so um but no our, our our locations i would say are dominantly very very friendly when it comes to the spiritual activity um but there are some people that antagonize behind our back and when you antagonize you just upset human spirits um unless you're bringing something with you to these locations. Well, I'm not ready, buddy. I say we do this thing. Huh? Say we get it going. Yeah. Let's see what they're all where, where, where would you say we start? What's your honest opinion? I'd throw down up here. Lovely. <laughs> I'd grab your stuff. Top down. Yeah, I'll we're, take we're, that. We're our way downstairs. <laughs> all, all right. right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Let's do it, baby. Okay. To anybody in this farmhouse, whether you were a soldier who got killed during the battle, you were dressed here and died here, or you lived on this land, we would love to talk to you. Nah. Can you tell yeah. us? Down. Down. Huh. They told us up during the the thing. Oh, yeah. just find it. Oh. oh! That wasn't me. That wasn't me. I know. Oh! 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 Holy shit. Elizabeth, are you in the room with us right now? Glenn. 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 Maybe that was one of the soldiers? Receive treatment here. Glenn, if you're in this room with us right now, can you please set off one of the devices that we've laid out for you? Oh, that was instant. Thank you. Glenn, if you would like to have a conversation with us, oh, did you see the paralyzing? This is spiky. Yeah, yeah, it's getting it right here. And then the cap ball is still going off. They don't go off that long. If you were a soldier that died in the Over battle, here. Over here. I have many regrets. Damn. If you were a soldier that died in the battle, can you make a knocking noise like this? That's sort of going before you did that. How many spirits are in this house with us? It's two locations now. That thing is just going nuts. It's been an active night. Yeah. Hate. Hate. Are you angry at the circumstances of your life and what happened to you? Do you feel hate? I'm very sorry that you had to deal with the things that you had to deal with. I know living through time of war isn't something that is easy to deal with, but we're not here to hurt you or take anything away from you. We just, we just want to have a conversation with you and learn your story. You don't need to feel threatened by us. You don't need to be afraid of us. We are only here to talk to you and help you out in any way that we can. Yeah, I saw that. To 
This thing never spikes, dude. I know, and it's been spiking a lot never, earlier. Never. We're gonna do an EVP session with you. All you have to do is use your voice to talk to us. Okay? Right next to it, dude. Emerge. Lights. It said lights. <laughs> lights That's emerge. Awesome. Okay, we're going to ask a couple questions. All you have to do is use your voice to speak with us, all right? Okay, everybody. Elizabeth, if you're here, all we want to do is figure out Fell. who... Fell. 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 Fell stairs. Interesting. All we want to do is figure out who is here in the house with us. So, Elizabeth, whoever you are, if you could please, Kevin. Kevin. Kevin, if you could please come talk to us, just use your voice, all right? History. History. Do you know the history of this house? Can you tell us? Where are the spirits in this house? The 1900s. They're in the 1900s. Camera. Wow. Yeah, that's right. We're filming with cameras. Are you okay with that? Can you light up that toy again if you are? Abandoned. Is there any hateful spirits in this house that we should be afraid of? Two. Why are you so hateful? Can you tell us that? Kevin. Kevin, on this what? one. Kevin was on that on one. one. Yeah, it did. You're right. Yeah. Mm. It said oh, Kevin. And this one right near me. Yeah. Kevin, are you upset? At the, are you upset at the circumstances of your life? Maybe your life was cut short? I heard one of the spirits that live in this place scratched a 13-year-old boy. Whoa. Oh, I got chills. If that was you, can you make yourself known? Prepare. Prepare. We're not afraid of you. Who are you? Tell me your name. That's nuts. <laughs> no, I start moving. Here. No, I know, and the cat balls have yeah. literally gone off and this more at the same time than I've ever seen yeah. them go off. I've never seen them go off one place in one place. Let's stop the DR60. All right. What if it's what if it's like a manifestation? Event? Feels off. I mean, manifestations are real, yeah. man. Like we're, I firmly yeah. believe that we're all spiritual beings having a human existence, and our energy can rub off into the world. It doesn't energy doesn't die. Yeah. It changes forms and states, but it doesn't just disappear. And if there's, you know, years or even decades of this same emotion and the same yeah. energy feeding into the walls of this place, who's to say that it doesn't manifest into something of itself? Oh, one hundred percent.
That yes. Yes. It was like, yes. Yes. Like it sounded like evil, like someone was mm -hmm. pissed off. Bro. Well, I think we do. It feels different up here, man. I think we do the evil, the alone session right now. I knew it was coming eventually. There was no avoiding it. I think we're going to lock Mike up. Oh, man. You ready? Yeah. Let's get it. All right, and let's I do it. Up here. Yeah. Right, right in that chair. chair. Yeah. Right there. Yep. All right. All right, let's lock them up. Let's go, baby. Let's lock <laughs> up. Okay, we're setting Mike up with the uh, the fear experiment. I guess. You're gonna get a straight jacket on. You're gonna do an Estes. Yep. All right, you wanna move that chair like right here? All right, the yeah. box is in my pocket there. I'm gonna grab that. Yeah, I fell for that one time. <laughs> right there in my pocket. <laughs> okay, All good right. luck, buddy. We're gonna leave you. Alright. See ya, buddy. See ya. Can you hear me? What are they doing? Go outside. What is that? To anyone that's listening right now, I'm putting myself in a really vulnerable position. If you want to come out and communicate through me to the guys downstairs, feel free to do so. Go away. Run. You haven't seen anything yet. I did. Oh, something just touched me on the hip. That was me. <laughs> something about fear. I can't. He's behind us. Camera. He's behind us. Camera. Alright everybody, so as you guys know, we always like to pay our respects to the spirits that we investigate here on the channel and that we try to contact. So we've come out to the Evergreen Cemetery, which is right next door to the actual Gettysburg Military Cemetery. And we found the grave of Deborah L. Harmon. If you remember, she's the woman who died unfortunately at the Gettysburg Murder House, who we may have been talking to that night. But it took a while to find this grave because this is a huge cemetery. It's <laughs> massive. Yeah. Debbie, thanks for talking to us. 
so sorry that what happened to you happened. But we brought you something. We brought you this rose and all of our good energy. And I hope that you're happy wherever you are now. If you're in the house, you're up in heaven, wherever you are. Debbie, thanks for talking to us the other night. We're really sad to hear what happened to you. And we hope that everything turned out well for you in the afterlife. Well, I think that's a wrap on our time here. Yes, indeed. Third time's a charm, I guess. So, I mean, all together that day, we discovered so much different evidence, uh, talked to so many different entities, uh, maybe even Debbie, hopefully. Um, we would, we never really know, though. Um, but the next night, some dark stuff happened, and it's definitely left a mark on me. So even though we had a good time briefly investigating the farmhouse, like Connor said, we did not have much time. The owners of these locations gave us a very specific amount of time, and because we ran out of time, or I should say we ran over time at the murder house, we ran out of time at the farmhouse. Now, we were trying to come back the next day, that was our plan, but as you're gonna see in part two of this series, we had to cut all of our investigations short because of something that would happen that next day. Something beyond comprehension, something, um, something that still scares me. But for now, it's Colin here. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to be posting part two in just a few days, and that's where we're going to include some of this mind-blowing footage. Not only is what happens at the very end mind-blowing, but the investigation before that at the schoolhouse contains unbelievably clear evidence, really loud voices, really loud movement, a crazy Estes session. The whole thing is a roller coaster ride, but thank you for watching and um, we'll see you guys next week. A bad spirit. No! No! Whatever was there didn't like us. Something happened here, something wrong. It was really a mistake doing the Estes method and then I get scratched. I don't know what the hell's going on with us right now. The first case of sleep paralysis that I've had in years. Uh. This is what I'm talking about, man. Look at that, during the fucking interview, too. It's still messing with us. But whatever we're talking to right now is really, really not good. Suffer. Suffer? What the f No. <laughs> what? What? Oh, holy shit, bro. Do you have a scratch. You have a massive f***ing scratch, bro. Hello! <laughs>